At the moment when this happened, which was at around 10 to the power of minus 43 seconds, there was a fluctuation. A fluctuation of the gravitational interaction. As a result of this fluctuation, the effect weakened, after which a very rapid expansion began. The expansion was similar to how a person blows up a balloon. It expands, which means that when we talk about the expansion of the universe, we understand that you can always put two points on the balloon, and the expansion will mean that as we blow up the balloon, the two points diverge from each other. This is how the universe expanded. The expansion happened very quickly, and by 10 to the power of minus 35 seconds, it was already much larger. And at that time, 10 to the power of minus 35 seconds, the temperature dropped from 10 to the power of 32 degrees to 100 trillion degrees, when this whole process took place at a speed much greater than the speed of light. How this happened, we do not know. But most definitely, this was what is now referred to in literature as inflation, the so-called inflationary potential which took place. And this inflation is what led, at the first moment in time, to a very powerful expansion of the universe. Then it also expanded further, but not at the same initial speed. We will see that now as well. It is expanding even now with acceleration. We cannot imagine what the forces are that make the universe move with acceleration. So, we say that it is some kind of dark energy, which we do not yet understand, which makes the universe expand at a speed of around 73.8 kilometers per second. At a speed of about 200 machs per second, it expands even further. But this is completely incomparable with the expansion that took place at the time of inflation. And then the formations began, which we will look at now as well. But I must mention that our solar system appeared only 9 billion years later, after entire galaxies had already been created. And if we now look at this picture again, it looks like this. So, arriving at 10 to the power of minus 35 seconds, we have very hot matter. We have plasma, which, at this moment, begins to form quarks, antiquarks, and gluons. The temperature is 10 trillion degrees, but it drops very quickly. And when it reaches a temperature comparable to the total energy of a proton and a neutron, from this quark soup or quark plasma, however you want to call it, protons and neutrons begin to crystallize. This process is called confinement in physics, which means order. If soup is a mess, then confinement is order, and that order results in the appearance of protons and neutrons. This happened one microsecond after the Big Bang. Protons and neutrons, generally speaking, a neutron has more energy than a proton. It transforms into a proton, emitting an electron and a neutrino. And one second after that, in this large mess, the neutrinos leave, and a further drop in temperature occurs. And after 180 seconds, light elements begin to form. Hydrogen, which makes up the largest portion. Helium, two protons, two neutrons, and I will show that very, very few of the heavier elements are formed. At this moment, the relationship arose that our universe currently consists of, which is 75% hydrogen and 25% helium, and everything else in very small amounts. 
At that moment we had protons, antiprotons, neutrons, antineutrons, electrons, positrons, neutrinos and antineutrinos. And at the very moment when they started to unite, there was total annihilation. They destroyed each other. And of course, a large amount of substance was lost at that moment. Then there was silence. Nothing special happened for about 300,000 years, until it cooled even further. And when the temperature reached 3,000 Kelvin, electrons began to circle around a proton, or around a helium nucleus. And at that moment, the radiation that was in the plasma, it, in essence, poured out into a new structure, into the structure of the atom. In the middle, there is a proton, an electron revolves around it, and all the excess radiation moved on. Since the system had already cooled down dramatically, this radiation moved throughout the entire universe. When it met a hot object, it heated up and acquired energy. Or the opposite, which is also known as the Compton effect, when it met colder conditions and it cooled down. In short, to some extent, it became a thermometer for the entire universe. And this glow is still moving around today. This radiation has no source, it is everywhere. Professor Shklovsky called it relict radiation. This is the radiation that arose 300,000 years ago. We can still see this radiation today, and at the South Pole, there are powerful installations that can register such relic radiation. And this is its spectrum. Here is the wavelength, here is the ultra-short waves and the radio waves. And from the spectrum, you can get the temperature of the universe, which is 2.7 Kelvin. You can calculate this temperature with high accuracy. Very cold, only 2.7 degrees Kelvin, is also referred to as absolute zero. Let us go further now that we understand a little about how the whole thing developed. We also understand that at another point or moment in time, after 400,000 years had passed, atoms began to form. And that these atoms are still around us in the present day. But these were light atoms, also known as relic radiation, as it is remnant radiation from an early stage of the universe.